Think lead core lines obsolete? Well, think again. Look at those big, beautiful rainbows. I got these fish while trolling 15 to 20 feet deep, and I didn't use a downrigger. If you don't want the expense or hassle of using a downrigger, pick up one of my yellow lead core rods in the Fish Hunt Shoot Production store and get ready to yell, fish on. Just like that, baby. Howdy folks, Kel Kellogg here. It is a cold, blustery day here in the Sierra foothills. Um, rain most of the night, it's not raining right now, but uh, it looks like it could at any time. I've had a lot of requests for this video. This isn't gonna be for everybody, but uh, if you're interested in this subject, you're gonna wa wanna watch it from you know start to finish. What I'm doing, I have a brand new Abu Garcia 5500 LC here and I'm setting up one of my hybrid lead core rigs. Now, as you guys know, I use two basic rigs. They're the same. They utilize three colors of lead core, but I have a deep rig and a shallow rig. The main difference is on the shallow rig, I only have a uh, 18 foot top shot that goes to my leader of fluorocarbon line of 20 pound fluorocarbon. On my shallow lead core rig, the one that I like to troll you know, near the surface but get down a little bit, I have a 60 foot top shot of 20 pound line on that one. And that's what we're gonna be doing today. The rigs are identical except for the length of the top shot. So, looks like Lucy's digging a hole over there. Anyway, so we're gonna be setting up the shallow rig today and I'm gonna be going through all the knots and everything. So let's take a look at this reel. I swear by these um, Abu 5500 LCs. They're not the, the sexiest, highest end reel out there, but they are a rock solid. They just flat out perform. And uh, I got some, got some new ones. There we go. And uh, if you get an LC 5500, here's what you're gonna get. You get a manual that says, this is a reel. I don't know what it says, it says something in there. Piece of foam rubber, and there is your reel. Level wind, line counter, these things are absolutely bulletproof. Um, I'm upgrading some of my stuff, so I reached out to my uh, my sponsors over at Pure Efficient, and they hooked me up with a few of these, and uh, I can't wait to get out on the water and be sporting a brand new Abu. 5500. I got a bunch of these and like I say I use them for stripers, trout, just about everything. They just flat out perform. So I'm going to be cutting in and out here. I got a little workbench set up here and uh, we will get started. I'll be right back. Look at those big beautiful rainbows. That's what trolling flies can do. You think trolling flies don't work? Well think again. You need to grab a set of my trolling flies, get out on the water, and get ready to go big. Ha <laughs> ha! Yes! Okay, I'm back. Now let's talk about some of the equipment I'm using, what you're gonna need, the line that I use, all that kind of stuff before we start spooling up. Um, the first thing I'm using, I've got that LC reel mounted on one of my line winders. I have, in terms of tools, have a scissors, you're gonna need that. I have some super glue, I buy the generic cheesy stuff. I think it's the same thing, it's just not in a fancy tube. I've got my wife's reading glasses because I can't find my own and uh, getting kind of blind. You young guys are laughing at me. You'll be blind someday too, so don't laugh too hard. Um, I've got this Trilene 10 pound test. This doesn't matter. This is just co-polymer. I use this for backing underneath my braid. I've got a spool of 20 pound fins braid. I've got a spool of 20 pound vanish fluorocarbon and I've got a spool of 15 pound test suffix lead core. Now, this is low end lead core for the suffix brand. Um, they've got some fancy stuff. I don't like the fancy stuff. It's great line, it's super smooth, it's wonderful. It's bonded so well with the sheath that I can't separate it. And you're gonna see moving on here, I have to be able to separate the sheath from the lead in, in order to tie the knots that I need to tie. So I like this, just the standard, it's called Suffix Performance Lead Core, 15 pound. I've played around with 12 pound, 18 pound. I like 15 best. I think it's a, a good compromise between line capacity and my reel and uh, the kind of depth I'm getting. And with these kind of rigs, I could get down 30 feet at about two miles an hour. So very effective for getting down without using a downrigger. 
Anyway, I'm gonna start spooling up. I've got all the formulas here, so if you're rigging up a 5500 LC, you can use my numbers, you know exactly what to do. I'm gonna click away for a second again, and uh, we will get started spooling up. Okay, so I've got the, uh, I've got the mono on there, and I am gonna spool on 80 feet of backing. Just lay a nice layer of line down on that spool, and that prevents things from spinning around. So I've got about, about another 30 feet to go here. Of course, the line counter is working in reverse, so I, I got to do some math here in my mind. Anyway, okay, there we go. That reads 920 feet. That means I have 80 feet of 10-pound test copolymer backing on here. The next thing we need to do is tie this backing to our braid. So I'll be right back. Okay, we've got 80 feet of 10 pound mono on the reel. And I have here, I have the 20 pound braided line. This is gonna be the backing behind the three colors of lead core. Um, and we need to link the 10 pound test and this 20 pound braid together. So here's how I do it. Um, this is a knot I learned a long time ago on charter boats. It's fairly quick. You'll need a little bit of practice. I'm probably out of practice, but uh, we'll get through it. And we're gonna tie this knot three different, three different times. We're gonna tie it to link the mono to the braid, the braid to the lead core, and the lead core to the fluorocarbon top shot. So let's start out. Here we go. This is the first one. Pull a little bit of this mono off the reel here. So I got something to, uh, Got something to work with. So there we go. I think I got plenty there. So what you want to do is, make sure you can see what I'm doing. So I've got the, the braid over here in my left hand. I've got the mono over here in my, my right hand. There's the tips of the two lines. I'm just going to lay them over one another, like so. Make sure I've got plenty of line to work with. So there you go. Tip of the mono's here, tip of the braid's there. They're just laying over each other. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna work with the mono first. I'm gonna bring the mono back around. That's gonna form this, this loop here. And I'm just gonna wrap around both the mono and the braid. And I'm gonna do that probably five or six or seven times, whatever I feel like. And theoretically, this knot here is never going to get anywhere near the water. It's going to be buried in the reel the whole time. So that's, that's five, five wraps. So I'm going to start to, to tighten that down a little bit. Let me find the end of the mono here. So we'll just kind of start to draw that down some. Not all the way, but just so it stays put. Now, on the braid side, there's the, the tip of the braid. We're going to do the same exact thing. We're going to bring that braid around like that, form that loop, and we're going to go over the braid and the mono five or six times. So there's one, two, whoa. Let's start again. I told you it takes a little practice, and I am a little, I am a little rusty. It's cold out here, and my fingers are kind of clumsy. So anyway, I got them both there. Let me just... We just go through it here. So there's once and uh, twice, three times, right there, four and five times. So now, just start to bring this down a little bit. My wife says, why do you always look at the camera? I said, just so I can see if I'm, in, if I'm in the frame when I'm demonstrating something. So I'm just starting to bring that knot down there. We've got the one in the mono over there. Grab both tag ends and just start to work those down. You want them to draw down nice and neat. And they're going to be fairly far away at first. So there, they're both starting to draw down. Now, just start to pull on both main lines and make those knots slide over to one another, right, like that. So you can see the knots are coming together there. And now just individually kind of snug them down. Pull the mono side, the braid side, both of the main line ends, and grab them and tug them down pretty good. There's that one. There's this one. 
and then here I'm gonna draw these tight together and what you got there hold it up to the camera you got a nice small knot the lines are linked together you can cut these tag ends very short I tend to leave just a little bit where's my scissors I leave probably I don't know a sixteenth of an inch or less probably these aren't very good for cutting braid but they'll get it done They're kind of sawn through it, but we'll we'll get it done. There we go. Okay, braids cut off, and now I'm gonna trim that mono tag end just like that. So I leave a little tag end, prevents slipping if for some reason I got a huge fish or something. I can't imagine having a fish that big, a trout that big anyway. But if it happened, I got a little bit of insurance there. And here's my final bit of insurance. I like to put a little bit of glue on my knots. So just take the cap off this and uh, there's that I'm just gonna have a I'm just gonna bring a little bulge up there of glue watch it squirt out all over come on baby Actually, I'll just go like there we go there we go just a little dab of that so okay I'll let that not dry and when we come back we're gonna spool on the braided backing so I'll be right back okay so I've got it all set up we're ready to spool on the braid let me zero this out now this is a question a lot of people ask me they say how much braid do you need to use to get the reel up near full when you're done after you put the lead core on and the top shot the answer to that question is 533 feet 533 feet of 20 pound braid will make the reel fill up just very nicely. So 533 feet. So I need to do a little math here. That's going to be my line counter is going to start off at 999 because it's going to be running backwards. So if we took off 500 feet, it would read 500, take off another 30 feet. We're looking for 470 feet as our reading in there, and that will give us 530 feet of braid. So let's start going. You can see that line winder working. That thing, that thing just works fabulous. It makes makes spooling up so simple. You know, I used to do this with my wife. She'd be holding it with a pencil, and it'd be burning her finger. She'd be like, "Ow, that hurts." But uh, as you can see, this is just a slick system. This this head rotates here. I adjust the uh, tension right here. There's a a thumb screw there I can make it tighter I can make it looser I can do whatever I want there's also a setting on here that will allow you to spool spinning reels the whole spool will spin so you're not getting a bunch of twist in your line anyway onward what did I say we're looking for 470 feet so I'm gonna keep on cranking and uh, I will be right back all right there we go we've got 530 feet of 20 pound braid on the uh, 5500 LC and it is time to knot on the lead core. We're gonna put on three colors. Looks like it's gonna go yellow. Looks like it's gonna go yellow, blue, and orange. So they're gonna be high visibility. That's great. I'll get to see, you know, I'll be able to see what I'm doing out on the water really well with those colors. So let's get started. The first thing we need to do, let me pull off a little lead core, is we need to separate the lead core from the sheath inside. So I always start off by cutting a nice clean cut and uh, how you do that let me get close to the camera you just start you just start playing with it I don't know if you can see that right there I've got a hold of the lead and you just kind of you know kind of work it down and I want a few inches of empty sheath to deal with and uh, believe it or not it seems to work better in cold weather so what's that that's probably 10 11 inches of, uh, of exposed lead right there so let me clip off the lead just clip that off right there and now we'll pull that sheath back up over the lead and that will enable us to tie the knot in the sheath and remember the strength of lead core line comes from the sheath not from the lead the lead let me show you that lead the lead is just it's just a very fine pencil of lead and this will this will break very easily 
So it is the sheath that gives the line its strength. So that's where we're going to tie our knot. We're going to tie the same knot that we use to link the mono to the braid. We're going to use it to link the, uh, the sheath on the lead core to the braid. So, this time I'll hold the, the lead core in my left hand. And here's the braid coming off the reel. Take that in my right hand and I'm just going to just going to overlap those two pieces of line just like I did before. In fact, let me get a little extra out of the reel there. So there we go. They are, they are well overlapped. And uh, this time, we'll start out with the knot, with the, with the braid. So we'll get probably six or seven six or seven wraps here around both lines so there's one two there's three shorten that up four right there there's five and there is six and that's probably enough so we'll start to start to draw that down just like that and again you don't want to draw it all the way down you just want to you want to get it started so you can still pull the other line through it but you can control it, it doesn't want to jump off there now we're at this point we'll tie the uh, same knot in the sheath of the lead core do six six is our goal so we'll go let's see one Fingers are clumsy out here in the cold. Two, three, wait, three, four, five, and six. Now let me pull this over here and we'll start to work that down. So you can see that starting to draw down right there. Now we'll just draw these, these two knots down a little more. Let me draw this one in the braid down a little bit and now we gotta gotta bring those together you can see them sliding together and that one in the in the sheath is drawn down a lot more than the one in the braid so kind of work with that braid one a little bit get them down an equal amount a little braid there there we go now now we'll draw that down oh I like that okay perfect so there we go I'm pulling fairly hard on the main lines. We'll draw these tag ends down now. Get a hold of this one. And get a hold of the braid. Now you saw I kind of had to take a time out there to fool with that knot a little bit. You gotta watch the knot. Make sure it's going down right. Before you, you tie it all the way down, you can kind of use your fingernail there to adjust it and make sure it looks you know nice and smooth. But let me hold this up here. I don't know how well the camera picks that up. I'll hold it up against my, my shirt there. So right here, well, there we go. Right here's the knot. As you can see, that is a nice, smooth knot. So I'm gonna trim the tag ends using my dull old kitchen scissors again. And then I'm gonna apply a little bit of super glue to that so there's that one that was the braid here's the one in the sheath right here that cut real easy that looks like that very nice knot you know that's a pretty powerful connection there Put a little bit of glue you didn't see it i turned off the camera I actually glued my fingers together for a second that that uh, that glue was kind of wet on that last knot so anyway it wouldn't be fun if you didn't glue your fingers together for a second when i was a kid i used to glue them together like that i'd freak out and start crying running to my mom but uh you know a little bit of acetone if you do get your fingers stuck together before this stuff completely dries that will take care of that so just set that down allow that to uh allow that to dry a bit and then we're going to spool on three colors of lead core line 
and then we're going to put on our top shot. So I'll be right back. So there we go. We've got them linked together. We've got our spool of lead core in the line winder. Got the reel in the line winder. Um, engage the reel. It's important when you're spooling up a reel, I like to tighten the drag down all the way. If you're reeling and you got some tension issues and the drag starts to spin, you can end up with your line not going on even. So tighten your drag down so you got plenty of power and then just you know smoothly, smoothly spool it on. We're looking for three colors of lead core to go on this reel. So let's get started. Here we go. Oop. Had the clicker on. So there's our there's our lead core. There's our yellow going on. Yellow, yellow, comes some blue, color number two is blue, and here comes number three is orange, and that's going to be nice high visibility, I'm going to be able to see that great, that's going to be fantastic. So there we go. Now. Here, snap that off. There we go. Three colors of lead core on the reel, and it is time to put on our 20 pound top shot. I'll be right back. I'll go over the length of that with you, and uh, we're just about done. That line winder works sweet. Um, I'm loving it. I can't wait to get this new reel out on the water and troll some flies behind it. Okay, I've got the fluorocarbon, the 20 pound test vanish in my left hand. I've got the, uh, the sheath of the lead core in my right hand. We'll lay them on top of each other. We'll start off with the knot in the, uh, on the lead core side first. And again, we're looking for probably six, six full wraps. So let's see here. There's we go, starting it down. Very nice, looking good. All right, so there we go, drawing that down. Now we'll bring those two knots together. There they go. Bring this fluorocarbon side down just a little bit more. There we go, they're just coming together right there. Now this is where you kinda gotta, gotta nurse this fluorocarbon side down. The, the, she side well, it wants to draw down because it's soft the, the fluoro is a little bit stiffer of course and there we go pull those down pull on those tags mm, I felt a little bit there pull on this uh, lead core side one more time in the both lines there there we go trim those tags off there go there's the knot nice and clean a little dab of that glue glue was laying on my wife's eyeglasses I hope I didn't get any on the lens I don't think I did there we go let that dry a bit put the cap back on before I do have an accident there we go so let that dry a little bit and uh, I'm going to be spooling on 50 to 60 feet of the Vanish um, 20 pound and that's going to give me invisibility even though it's 20 pound test, fish can't see it. I'm going to take that down to a bead and a trolling swivel and then I'll run my leader on that. It might be a leader to a fly, it might be a leader to a spoon, whatever. This is my shallow rig as I said earlier and uh, what that what that longer top shot allows me to do, I might just want to fish with half a color of lead core out. So having that 60 feet of top shot ensures I'm going to have the bait well behind the boat. Now the other rig, my deep lead core rig, it's only got an 18 foot top shot. So with that one, you know, I'm assuming I'm going to be fishing 10 feet deep or more. So I'm going to have a little bit of lead core out. But with this one, I might have a very short distance of lead core out. So I use that extra top shot just to ensure that my offering is away from the kayak or away from the boat. And, uh, you know, I'm not so close to the boat that I'm scaring a fish. Although, you know, sometimes they will hit surprisingly close to the boat. So 
you know. But that, that's how I set up, that's how I do it, and that's why I do it like that. Shorter top shot on the deeper rod, longer top shot on the rod that I'm going to be fishing shallower with. Oh, but that's dry, you can just burn it in with your fingers a little bit like so. And uh, let me throw this on the line winder right here. One knock on this vanish fluorocarbon is it is stiff, which works just fine for trolling. But I uh, don't know how how much I like it if I was going to spool up with it and cast, you know, cast with it. When you're trolling, you're not really casting. You're just letting your line out in a very controlled way. So there we go. That's on there. And uh, knock that clicker off there. And I'll get back to the... Uh, to the fluorocarbon and then zero this out right there so I'm at zero so that should read that should read 900 and 40 940 Here comes 900 And 40 right there. So, now let's take a look at that reel. As you can see, it is full right up to the top. I've got 500 plus feet, about 530 feet of 20 pound braid backing. I've got three colors or 90 feet of lead core line and then I've got 60 feet of 20 pound vanish fluorocarbon on top of that. Um, that's how you set up the hybrid rig. That's how I set it up. It takes a little time. There's some knots involved. Um, just got to work through all that. But uh, it's a very convenient way to fish once you're out on the water. I love it. I've been experimenting with these type of rigs for about 10 years now. I'm still dialing it in. But uh, this is how I'm doing it right now. It's very efficient. It works very well. Just make sure you get that lower end uh, lead core so you're able to take the sheath off the lead really easily. But uh, man, that's just a beautiful job. Beautiful reel. I can't wait to get out on the water and try that. I want to thank you guys for all the support. I hope this helps you guys out on the water that are interested in fishing with lead core line. And I will catch you next time right here on YouTube. I'm Kel Kellogg and I'm signing off. Thanks a lot, guys.